Amiwati, what, what, that? what, the law? what, I cannot speak English. Hello everybody, it's your girl Jay, and today I'm here with my November wrap-up part one for 2021. I read a total of 15 books, so the wrap-up will be split up into three parts, so without further ado, let us get started. The first book that I read is Gilded by Marissa Meyer. I ended up giving this a 4 out of 5 stars. This follows Cyrilda, who is the poor Miller's daughter, and she is known for her outlandish tales. When she tells a tale to the Earl King on the night of the Great Hunt, she is then taken to his castle and told that she needs to spin a bunch of straw into gold or else face the consequences of her lies. Devastated, Cyrilda ends up some summoning a mysterious boy who says that he will aid her in her task, but there is a price that she must pay. This is definitely not my favorite Marissa Meyer book that I've read. I have loved the majority of her books, but this one was just very average, although I did enjoy my time reading it. This is a Rumpelstiltskin retelling, which I had no idea was a series, so when I got to the ending, I was shocked because it ended very abruptly, and I was just like, but there's more, there's gotta be more. And then I looked it up on Goodreads and discovered it was actually a series, and now it all makes more sense. I am definitely intrigued to see where the story progresses in the next one. I think my biggest disappointment of this book is that I was expecting the same, like, friendship dynamics that we get in all the other Marissa Meyer books, but it was mostly Cyrilda by herself for the majority of the book, so you didn't really get any of those dynamics. I also wasn't the biggest fan of the romance in this book. It just didn't give me the same vibe vibes that I usually get with Marissa Meyer's writing, so that was a big disappointment. I did really love the setting though, and the descriptions of the places that Zerelda went were really atmospheric and well done. I think that my favorite part of this book was definitely when Zerelda was spinning her tales and we got to hear them as well. That was probably the most fun I had while reading. And I did like Guild as a character on his own, so I'm definitely intrigued to see where the story goes, like I said, and I'll definitely be picking up the second in the series, but yeah, I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. Next, I read Skin of the Sea by Natasha Bowen. I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. I was initially super excited for this book because the cover, Hello Gorgeous, and also Mermaids, Hello Yes. This follows Simi, who is a Mami Wata, who is a mermaid tasked with helping the souls killed at sea to go off to the afterlife. When a living boy falls into the sea, Simi ends up saving his life, which goes against an ancient decree and puts the rest of the Mami Wata in danger. Now, Simi needs to go on a great adventure in order to seek forgiveness from this superior creator, and it's like the story of that. This took me a while to get into, as I found the beginning of the story to be very slow. I did enjoy Simi as a character. I think that she was very compassionate, but also very fierce at the same time. I also really liked Issa. I think that he was a really fun addition to the story. Cola was also a great character. I really enjoyed learning more about him as the story progressed. He was super mysterious. So I think that the biggest downfall and why I didn't enjoy this story as much as I could have was the romance, which was a big aspect of this book. I just think that the story would have been better if it was more of a platonic friendship and the journey of trying to bring the twins home, which would make more sense if you actually read the book, would have been a lot more interesting of a focus than the romance. I also was not the biggest fan of the ending. I just felt that it was very abrupt and I just didn't really get the closure that I wanted from the story, so I did end up giving it a 3 out of 5 stars. Next up, I read Heartstopper Volume 4 by Alice Oseman. This is the fourth installment of Heartstopper, obviously. <laughs> well, I give this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I absolutely adore this series. This installment still follows Charlie and Nick, and they are trying to navigate their feelings and telling each other that they love one another, and it is just so pure and cute and adorable. This series just makes me so happy. It definitely has a bigger focus on Charlie's mental health in this one, and Nick learning how to support him the best of his abilities. I really love how this series doesn't have the love cures all trope, and Charlie and Nick really need to work together to make their relationship work with Charlie's declining mental health. 
I think that the more difficult topics of depression and eating disorders were handled in a very respectable way. I always think that this author does such an incredible job with that. I also really loved the multiple conversations that Nick has with his friends and family on how to best support Charlie and how sometimes just being there to listen is the best option. I just think that that is such an important message because sometimes you just need to lend a listening ear and it'll make things at least a little bit better. But yeah, I love this series. 4.5 out of 5 stars. I am really sad that it is only one more book in the series because I never want this story to end. Next up is a book called Bite Back by Molly Likovich. This is one of my good friends and she just writes the most fun stories in my opinion. I gave this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. This follows Henry who is in her senior year at the prestigious yet pretentious Davidson College. While out one night with her best friend George, Henry meets a mysterious yet sexy man named Dorian. The next day, she discovers that Dorian is actually her classics professor, and he is also a vampire, trying to make a decision on what she is going to do about this newfound situation. Henry discovers that there is a vampire hunting club at her school called the Homerics, who are very suspicious of the new professor. And it's basically the story of Henry trying to navigate all of that, and also, you know, vampire sexy time. So I'm honestly obsessed with Molly and her writing. I have read multiple things by her and I just think that they are always so much fun. I read this book in one sitting. I flew through it while I was on the train on the way to my boyfriend's house, which is like a two hour train ride and I finished it within that time because I just could not stop reading. These characters had me smiling like an absolute idiot or wanting to wring their necks out because they are so annoying. Dorian, I'm looking at you. He drove me insane which is the point of his character, but oh, he's just so infuriating. I really liked how the story is told from both Henry's point of view as well as some other key characters, so we get a glimpse into their minds as well. I loved Henry's best friends, George and Eldon. I think that the characters are so much fun. The three of them having banter was so much fun to read, and they actually felt like real people. So you may ask why I'm only giving 4.5 out of 5 instead of a full 5 stars, and the answer is solely Dorian. I just couldn't with him which again was the point, but it just, he made me so angry. At times I wanted to throw my Kindle across the room because I was just done with him and his little attitude and the way that he treated Mel was not okay. So I am hoping in the second book that my little Mel gets all the love and affection that he deserves because I love him so much. And honestly, just down with Dorian. That's like my message of this book. But also the vampire sexy times was just chef's kiss. I absolutely loved reading it and I just highly recommend the book. Also, the ending had me reeling. I am so excited for book two. But yeah, 4.5 out of 5 stars. Definitely pick up this series. The second book's coming out in the summer, I believe, so I am here for it. I am excited. I need to know what happens next because we are left on such a cliffhanger, so Molly, I hate you for the cliffhanger, but I love you for this book. And then the final book that I will be talking about in this part of the wrap-up is The Year I Stopped Trying. This is by Katie Heaney, and I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. This follows Mary Davis, who has always been a stellar academic student. She pushes herself to the brink in order to meet her goals. One day, she forgets to do her homework, and she is expecting very harsh punishment from her teachers, but nobody seems to notice. She begins to question why she tries so hard if nobody is going to appreciate it, and so she decides that for the rest of the year, she's going to take time for herself, and it's basically the story of that. This is a very, very quick read, which covers a lot more topics than I originally thought it was going to dive into. It discusses things like sexuality, self-discovery, friendship, and mental health. I liked the exploration of these topics, but I was just left wanting more at the end of it. I really did like Mary's voice as a main character. I loved her dry humor and sarcasm to get through the days because that is how I handle things as well, so it was very relatable. I also really enjoyed watching her friendships develop as the story progressed. I think that this book is going to be very relatable for a lot of closeted teens, so I definitely think that it is an important story to read, but I, again, was just wanting more in the end, so I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. 
Alright everybody, so those are the first five books that I read for the month of November 2021. I will leave the other two wrap-ups down below for the next 10 books that I read in November, so check that out as well once they're uploaded. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!